Hello. I want to take a look at this situation, and I want to make an interaction diagram and a free body diagram for this situation. Um, this is a little bit different from things we've done before in that we see that there's an angle here of 30 degrees above horizontal. And so our arrows are not going to be perfectly lined up along an axis. And I want us to take a look at some differences there. So um, one thing to always keep in mind about tension forces is we have a tension as we're like literally ripping at those molecular bonds in a rope or a cord or a string or whatever. And so as we pull those molecular bonds apart, they pull back. And that tension force then is always going to act like along the line of the string or the rope or whatever. So making this interaction diagram, I pre-made some circles so I wouldn't have to draw them all. Um, and I'm going to be interested in a free body diagram for the box. So I'm going to identify the box as the thing I'm really interested in. And what interactions are there? Well, I am pulling on the rope. So the rope is pulling on the box. Um, let's see, rereading this situation. I'm pulling a box at a constant speed across the floor. Oh, at a constant speed, that's going to mean that my forces have to be balanced. Um, pull the rope with a 200 Newton tension. So there is a normal force from the floor on the box. Although what's also got to be true is that if you're pulling this box at least somewhat forwards, then there's got to be some kind of force going back. Some kind of force, if you're pulling it to the left, then there's got to be some kind of force to the right. And so I can reasonably think then that that must mean that there is some noticeable amount of friction between the floor and the box. Um, the earth also pulls on the box. Earth pulls on me. Um, let's leave our interaction diagram at that and we could label these forces acting on the box i won't label the other ones but there's a tension uh on the box from the a tension force between the box and the rope and there is a normal force between the floor and the box and there is also between the floor and the box we have a frictional force from those surfaces rubbing against each other and we have a gravitational force between the earth and the box so that leaves me with four forces acting on this box i've got to have four arrows on my free body diagram so I'm going to just start drawing some arrows here. Oops. So first, I want to show you a pretty common mistake that uh, people are very likely to make when doing this diagram. So first, we start off with this gravitational force downwards, and that didn't quite go down, but close enough. We've got a frictional force going back this way. We've got a tension force at that 30 degree angle and a lot of people's first inclination when they make a diagram like this is to think that the normal force must be exactly the same as the gravitational force these have to be equal amounts because you've seen those be equal amounts a bunch of times before but I want to remind you that normal forces do not do the job of balance out whatever the gravitational force is. That isn't true. Let's remember that normal forces are about the squishing of a surface. And so if you're pulling on this box at an angle where you're pulling partly upwards, then by pulling upwards on that box, then it's not squished against the floor as much as it normally would be. And I want you to notice also that there's no way, I need to make this friction arrow a little longer, but there's no way that these four forces could possibly be balanced if this upwards arrow and this downwards arrow are equal amounts. Since this tension arrow pulls partly upwards, then our forces are going to be unbalanced as far as up and down go. This can't be right. 
So our solution to this, because we know that the box is squishing the floor less, and that's what normal forces are all about, then that must mean that this upwards arrow for the normal force has to be smaller. Because you're lifting up on the box, then we have to have less of a squish. Like if you lifted up on the box enough, the box would leave the floor altogether and it wouldn't be squishing the floor at all. And maybe you can imagine how you could almost get it up off the floor. And so uh, in that case, we would have just a really tiny, tiny, tiny upwards arrow from the normal force. Normal forces are about how much squishing. And since you're lifting up, then that box and the floor don't squish each other as much. So if I'm going to label these, then I would say, and I'm not going to label these in full, just um, in the interest of time, but I would have a normal force up. I would have a gravitational force down. And that would be gravitational force would be by the earth on the box. Normal force would be by the floor on the box. The frictional force is also by the floor on the box. So the floor is actually doing two things to this box. Uh, the floor and the box are squishing each other is the normal force, and they're rubbing against each other. Um, and that rubbing um, acts to reduce any relative motion between those surfaces, uh, which is why that frictional force is opposite the direction of motion. And then I've got, last one, I've got a tension force by the rope on that box. So there is our uh, free body diagram for this situation. And an important thing for us to recognize is the normal force is smaller because you're lifting upwards. Um, an opposite kind of situation would be if you were pushing down and sideways on the box, then you're squishing the box extra hard into the floor. And that would make that normal force in a situation like that, if you were pushing down, then that normal force would have to be even larger than the gravitational force. But that's a different situation than this one. I just want us to recognize that normal forces, their amounts are dependent on the context. They do not always balance gravitational forces. So there's that.